Okay. Good afternoon. I haven't heard you guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you very much for uh, coming. And I know that uh, I don't know how we motivated you to come uh, to attend uh, an important meeting tonight. Uh, tonight, but uh, it's so so beautiful outside. So I was uh, probably expect that you would be out. Uh, you know, whatever. But uh, thank you for coming. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, one thing we did talk before, uh, as part of our lecture series in the past uh, few months, was how do we bring in role models that you can look up to, and uh, and as you graduate or as you start your careers. So uh, these are some people that I like to, you know, if not copy, at least learn from. And so uh, we have one of those people tonight, uh, Lara Hernandez, and she, as as I first uh, got introduced to her, I was going to try to speak Spanish with her, but uh, apparently. Uh, she said, no, uh, my husband's in and is, and I'm not. So, uh, uh, so we failed, uh, but uh, we spoke English, which is great. Uh, and so let me uh, read uh, some things about her here. Very good stuff. I mean, she graduated in 1996, so 16 years ago, and not very long ago. And she's done very well. So let me read a little bit more about it, because I think it's worth uh, doing it. Uh, she's an executive with a proven record. Uh, of building and leading high performance teams in complex businesses and consistently driving profitable hotel revenue. And when you go into business, you're going to realize that uh, revenue is very critical. That's why in the PL, at the very top is revenue and sales, etc. So don't ever uh, you know, misunderstand that at the end of the day, these are profitable enterprises, they have to make money, and therefore, you have, uh, money making starts with uh, selling. Uh, she, uh, some of the accountants may uh, uh, not agree with that, but uh, that's how it works. Uh, she, has, she has deep understanding of the distribution landscape, web, voice, online travel agencies, global distribution systems, and loyalty marketing, and uh, B2B direct sales. Hernandez has demonstrated success in both launching and repositioning distribution strategies to deliver increased market share, a greater audience engagement, and increased revenue. Currently, Hernandez ser serves as a Vice President of Distribution and Relationship Marketing Americas for IHG uh, Intercontinental Group of Hotels, uh, PLC. IHG family of brands includes the Intercontinental Brands, uh, the Crown Plaza Hotel and Resorts, the Hotel Indigo, uh, Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Express, Holiday Inn Club Vacations, Stay Bridge Suites, and Kendall Woods uh, Suites. Hernandez is responsible for the delivery of over $5.5 billion annually through IHG direct distribution channels and loyalty programs, voice, web, mobile, uh, and priority club rewards with a specific focus on more than 3,400 hotels in the Americas. Overseeing the strategy, key owner and stakeholder relationships, developing opportunities in key and emerging markets, some of the things that she does on a day-to-day -day basis. Previously, uh, she, was, uh, she served as the Director of Business Travel within IHG Worldwide Sales Team, where she was accountable for developing and maintaining IHG's business travel segment strategy. She focused on innovating and improving sales programs and products to leverage IHG's scale in the business travel segment while ensuring a consistent approach uh, was executed with managed accounts globally. Hernandez joined IHG in 2006 as the Account Director of Business Development, Distribution Marketing for the Americas, and shortly thereafter managed the hotel integration team in the Americas region, responsible for developing revenue opportunities for IHG's hotels. She has had a diverse career that has progressed through multiple disciplines in the hospitality industry. After several years in hotel operations, she spent the last uh, 17 in leadership roles focused on sales and marketing, within the hotel industry, work with a variety of brands and ownership brand, uh, uh, groups. She holds a bachelor's degree from West Virginia University, in fact, from the Davis College. And uh, in fact, uh, Rudy Al Macy, uh, the dean of the, uh, of the uh, Davis College, is here with us tonight, as well as some of the professors and I hope some students also. Uh, and she, um, outside of her uh, career, her true passion is spending time with her husband of eight years, Matt, her three-year-old son, uh, Evan and her two-year-old daughter Sarah. Let's welcome uh, Lara with uh, just a very, very mountaineer welcome. Thank you very much. 
Good evening. I, I too am surprised that you all are in, in this room. I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. I know it's beautiful out. I remember the days when I was here at the university. A day like this was really tough to come inside. So I'm thrilled to be here with you all. Um, it is my first day back here since 1996. And if you don't notice how special it is every day because you walk this campus, I can promise you that being away from the campus and then coming back to the campus, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful place. So I, I think I think I'll be back. Uh, certainly it won't be another 16 years. And uh, just one more note to AJ, who uh, found me through the power of social media. There was an article written about me about some work that I had done when I was in the Worldwide Sales Group, and, and that's how AJ found me. So as you all know, what is said wherever it's said that goes on the internet stays on the internet, and that's the power of social media. So I'm, I'm quite glad that article uh, was written and that you found me. Thank you for tracking me down. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit uh, about a handful of topics. Um, talking to you a little bit about the foundations for your career path, whatever that is that you go into, whether you're going to go into the hospitality business, hotel business. I was talking to a gentleman earlier who was thinking about going into early, uh, the oil and gas business. At the core of the foundation for your career path is your leadership competencies and what you own and your personal brand and, and how you drive yourself to whatever it is that you want to do. I'll talk to you a little bit about the current and the future state of the business, and I hope the accountants are nice to me when they start asking me questions about my financial slides. Uh, but uh, what's happening in the hospitality business, specifically in the hotel business, current what happened in 2011 in the past, and then what's the future look like? What's the outlook look like, the business? The, the future's strong. It's a, it's a great business to be in. I'm going to give you a little insight into IHG as a company, um, where we've come from and where we're heading. Uh, regardless if you are interested in moving specifically into the hotel business, what IHG stands for, I think, is something that as you're thinking about your career and what kinds of companies that you want to work for, these are the core values and the kinds of companies that are worthy of uh, people like you who have invested in your education, investing in your career, and want to be great leaders in whatever it is that you want to do. And then we'll save some time for some questions and answers. <clears throat> So if I jump right into it and just talk a little bit about my career path, um, as mentioned before, I graduated from WVU in 1996, and this was really where I started my hotel career. Um, I had, prior to coming to West Virginia University, I went to high school in New Jersey outside of Princeton in a town called Plainsboro, and I had always worked in restaurants there, never worked in hotels, but really had a passion for the hospitality business. I always enjoyed it. Uh, worked a little retail, wasn't really my thing, although that has an element of hospitality. And it was really here at WVU where I started my career in the hotel business. I started working at what used to be the Holiday Inn, uh, not far from here, maybe eight miles from here, I think, or so. Not really sure. I'm a little turned around right now um, where we are right now, but uh, by the Coliseum. And I started as a front desk clerk, working the 3 to 11 shift, not making um, that much money, but I loved the job. It was absolutely, honestly, to this day in my entire career that I'll walk you through, one of my f most favorite positions I've ever held in the hotel business because of the interaction with guests, the interaction with, with a business traveler or a sense of occasion when a family was checking in. To me, that was the, the greatest honor to be able to connect with that person as they were either away from home, from their family, out on a business trip trying to uh, promote their career. And I had such a sense of pride that you could either make or break that path that that traveler was having from the beginning of that check-in experience. And even when things went wrong, because things do go wrong, um, and no matter what career that job or career that we're in, the service recovery piece of it was a great life lesson for me because it taught me that not everything's going to be perfect, but how you respond to people and personal interactions with people are really important. That was a great foundation for me in my career. Just before I graduated from WVU, about two weeks before I graduated, at the time it was a company called Tolman and Hunley Hotels, they came to me and they said, we would like to make you a director of sales. 
and I thought, you mean I'm going to have a business card, right? This is the biggest deal in my life. I'm going to have a business card, and you want to make me a director of sales. And they wanted to move me to Florence, Kentucky, to be the director of sales of, a, at the time, I think it was a 106-room Holiday Inn. Uh, and I called my parents, and I told them that I was getting ready to pack up my I can't remember, it was a Ford Probe at the time, and my dog, who I got here from the Humane Society in Morgantown, and we were moving to Florence, Kentucky, and I took over my first sales office, uh, heading up that 106-room hotel. I knew a little bit about the hotel business, knew a little bit about sales, because I had done some things here at the Holiday Inn. Was I quite qualified to be a director of sales of a 106-room Holiday Inn? Not sure. But I knew that I was the most qualified person in the hotel to do it, and I owned it, right? I owned it. I knew that that, that that sales office needed. There was a couple of sales managers working for me. I knew that sales office needed leadership. That sales office needed direction. Those clients wanted interaction with somebody. And that those are simple things. Right, those aren't complicated things. Those don't need years and years of strategy work behind them. That's about talking to your customers, understanding what to meet the needs of your customers, and bringing customers to the hotel. And that went quite well for me. And I thought, well, this hotel sales thing is working out. My career is on path. Um, but I really wanted to get back to Atlanta. I wanted to move to Atlanta when I was in university here. My brothers lived in Atlanta, and I visited them one summer. And I really liked it there, very close with my two older brothers. And luckily, uh, about eight months into being at the Holiday Inn in Florence, Kentucky, a company called Impact Hotel Group was coming in to buy five of the Holiday Inns in Morgantown and Fairmont and Charleston. At that time, Tolman and Hunley was selling off hotels, and they wanted to move me to Atlanta. It was a really odd experience, right? It was exactly what I wanted. Things were, this can't be happening. I've been a nice person. I've done good things. Everything seems to be working out. And they moved me, Impact Hotel Group moved me to Atlanta where I took on a role where I was heading up pre-opening sales and marketing, traveling around to, at that time it was mostly Marriott, Select Service, Fairfields, Courtyards, smaller hotels, traveling around for 90 days, being on site. I would come home a little bit, but I was not much older than most of you, so I didn't care about coming home. I wanted to stay wherever I was over the weekend. That was fun. It was on somebody else's dime. Right? That sounds great. Um, so I learned a lot in that role because I learned again, once again, that coming into a new market and representing a brand that was going to be new on the street corner, even though it was a national brand, still that unit hotel was a national brand. I needed to represent that brand and go out and talk to customers. And as we were hiring staff, I needed to be a leader. Right? Because I was representing the, the corporate office back in Atlanta, and I was representing that company and how I acted and how I followed through and how I made sure that people understood our mission and our strategy for that hotel was really important. And so I got a great amount of experience opening those new hotels. Um, for those of you who, who may choose to take the hotel path, um, opening hotels is a, is a fantastic experience. If it, um, if it doesn't drive you out of the hotel business, then you know that's really a path for you because it's some tough stuff. And then after that, I joined a company called Cooper Companies, um, where my hotel opening experience really catapulted me into a new level where I can be in above property kinds of roles, regional director of sales kinds of roles, where I was overseeing other properties. And that's, again, where I had to up my game. Every step of the way that you're seeing so far, I said to myself, am I qualified for this job? I don't know if I'm qualified for this job, but some leader who hired me saw that I had the passion and the will and the desire and the smarts and the understanding of our business, and that that, that is so much about what you want out of your career. Absolutely, you need technical understanding, but if you have the passion and the will and the desire and the dedication, that can overcome so many things that you need to learn along the way around to the technical skills. Um, so I left Cooper Companies, and as many people who you will meet that have been in the hotel business for a long period of time, you leave once, 
right? You want to see what's out there after you've gotten your hotel career off on a, on a start. And you kind of leave once because you say, is, is that better out there? Is that different out there? And I left uh, the hotel business to help my family with a coffee business that they were uh, building up. And then quickly after I got that sorted out, I came back to the hotel business because I realized that was really my passion. Um, and I wanted to get back to what was my passion. Although leaving and going to Georgia Beverage Systems was an opportunity for me to grow in a different area um, of my skill set as well. And then Vista Host Hotels, again, I came back on my path and I was a regional director of sales where I oversaw anywhere between 20 and 30 hotels. So I had regional, uh, I had folks at the sales office on property and general managers where I really started to give guidance around their marketing plans, their strategies, direct sales, how to move that market share off of the corner out of one hotel and into another. And then that all brought me to where I am today with IHG. So when I joined IHG or Intercontinental Hotels Group, um, some of you may know it as Holiday Inn, used to be called Bass, but we go by IHG now, Intercontinental Hotels Group, um, I joined in distribution and relationship marketing. Um, sorry, at the time it was called distribution marketing. And I was able to take my hotel background, my on property and above property experience, and add that into the distribution landscape where I led and managed our um, online travel agency partners, Expedia, Priceline, Travelocity. You probably lo know a lot of those names. And that's really where that distribution landscape was changing dramatically. Right? The world of the internet was changing how people shopped and bought in the hotel business. Here again, I was in a place where I knew a fair bit about it. I knew from, from a portfolio of hotels I would work. Did I know what I, was, what I needed to know to run uh, you know, $5 billion over relationships with our biggest partners in the Americas? Maybe, maybe not, um, but it was my leadership, once again, and my passion and my commitment to doing the right thing. Right? Doing the right thing is not always the easiest thing. It was about doing the right thing and making the hard decisions in a complex space. The distribution landscape is a very complex space because it's ever-changing, as, as, as many of you are probably much more technically savvy than I am even. Um, as, as I've been standing up here talking, what Google's doing with the distribution landscape for my branded direct websites right now has changed. Some algorithm has changed. Right? So I, I learned at that point that I didn't have to know everything. I didn't have to know everything that the most technical people knew in the room. What I had to do was I had to be a leader to get the right answers and motivate people and make sure that I was doing my part so that as a team we could, su we could succeed. Um, after that, I, in that role, I was in that role for a handful of years, then I moved into worldwide sales um, where I took a step back from leading and managing teams to really focus on my strategy development. This was a wonderful opportunity to get global view. I'd always been a bit US centric, although I was in the Americas, but in general in the Americas, the, the, what happens in the US hotels makes or breaks what, what is gonna happen with the, the top line revenue throughout the region. So I stepped back to get a global view. Um, what's happening out there? Do customers buy differently in Asia than they do buy differently in uh, Germany than they buy differently in Brazil? <clears throat> and what I learned from that was that at the core, foundationally, sales is sales, right? Customer interactions are customer interactions. How you approach somebody in the way that they want to be approached is so vitally important because wherever you go around the world, whether you plan to work on a with a local company that's based here, um, a global company that you have some kind of regional job, um, you have to make sure that you adjust your approach to people in whatever whatever motivates them. Pushing your approach and your way onto others doesn't clear the path to be successful. So that was a great learning opportunity for me. And then this was the opportunity um, once again to come back to distribution and relationship marketing where a vice president role had opened up um, within IHG, which is my current role I've been in for just about a year now. And it's been a wonderful chance for me to come back. I, I manage a team of about 40 or so people, directly and indirectly, um, which really is what motivates me. I love that people aspect of things. Well, I'm driven by the top line, right? I'm very results driven. 
detail driven. Um, I like to see the measurements. I like to see the metrics. Um, in, in the hotel business or, or any successful business, it's how you get the people uh, rallied around whatever the vision is to accomplish what the goal is. So I've been quite lucky in my career um, to be, to, to continue to drive on and drive forward. The other thing I would say that I feel extremely fortunate about working um, in a company like mine with a culture like mine, um, and it's not just specific to the hotel business, there's many companies like this, is that I've been able to have a career as a working mother. I never thought I would be able to work in a business up until uh, joining IHG. I didn't really think that that was going to be an option for me. Um, I, I thought that if you didn't travel all the time, then you couldn't possibly have a career and have a family. Um, and I came to a company that was a great fit for me that, that valued me um, and valued uh, family and valued what, what that meant to make an, an individual employee the best that they could be. So um, it's been a wonderful path for me and I can't wait to see what's next although I'm not quite ready to move on yet because I've still got lots to do in this current role. So um, I, I tie this to what you, whatever it is that you're doing today, whenever it is that you're graduating, um, I think there's so many life lessons that, that I learned when I was here at West Virginia, that, that West Virginia University that you are learning as well. And one of those is about diversity. Right, so if you look around the room and you look at your neighbors, you probably sat next to people that you know and are your buddies. But if, you, if we made everybody scatter around, you'd be sitting next to people that maybe in, in, regular, in regular life you might not sit in the same room with. Right? You might not pick a partner in a study uh, if your professor didn't ask you to have that partner. But the lessons of the, the rooms that you end up with today at university with diversity, and I'm not just talking about people with different skin color or male versus female, I'm talking about people with different, although that's part of it, um, people with different points of views. You can take that with you through your career no matter where you go. Because that's, again, when you're in business, that's about appreciating where other people are coming from and understanding their point of view will always make you more um, successful. And I think that's one of the big lessons that I learned here at university, being such a big school and having access to so many different kinds of people. It really helped me understand that diversity, d different points of view, are such a vital part of success. Um, Dignity is the next one, right? So no matter what you do, making the right decision, making the honest decision, making decisions that at the core have character is so important in what you do today in your life at, at WVU and what you will take with you through your life. And I bring up the piece about social media um, because it's a piece in our business that I, I look after and, and it's a lesson we're treating our hotels. Right? If, if a hotel says something to a consumer out in a social media channel, it's out there forever. Right? That, that is the hotel's brand, that is the hotel's reputation, that is the hotel's dignity, that's their character. Well, it's no different for the life lessons you're learning today. Right? If you're kind to people, that will help you down the road. Might not right now. Right, might might feel like why am I the nice guy, and I I might not always get ahead. Why, why is that happening? But I can promise you, for me, making the right decision and the harder decisions, and having character and being honest along the way when I was here at WVU, and then certainly in my career path, has paid off for me, and probably was part of the reason why I was in some of those jobs. Saying I don't know if I'm qualified for this, but they put me in the job because there was a boss like me that's, that I'm hiring people that was looking down and said, you know what, she might not have all the technical skills, but she has dignity and she has character and that's the kind of people that I want to build great teams with. <clears throat> and the third one's about discipline, right? So to me, one of the greatest lessons that I learned here at WVU was you start something and you finish it. That's why you all are here. You haven't graduated yet, but you plan to graduate. And, and the discipline that university teaches you, whether it's about being registered for the right courses or showing up on time or the, the ambition you have for graduating, I can't stress to you enough how what you learn here around discipline will matter to you in the workforce. Because you'll go from a world where um, timing is changing, right? The world is changing. Job, jobs and companies need to be more flexible to your generation, but at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about show up at nine or leave at five or, or 
whether you're in a job that clocks in or, clo or doesn't clock in, whatever it is, it's about having the personal discipline and owning your decisions. And those are the kinds of lessons that you learn today about owning yourself and having that discipline that will pay off for you over and over again as you're, as you're developing your career path, as it, as it certainly did for me. So there's kind of two sides to when I think about leadership. Right? There's sort of this hard skills piece of it, and then there's this soft skills piece of it. And when we talk about the hard skills piece of it, it's about, and I have a brand SME bubble up there, subject matter expert is what that stands for, but, but it, it, call it a product, call it a brand, call it whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is, the job, the project, um, the product that you're on, the team that you're working on, the hard skills are about having those technical skills. And so you do need to, know that you have to commit to having those technical skills. You have to understand what you stand for. You have to understand if it's a red shirt, right? What, what makes up that red shirt? Does it have a pocket? Is it different? So, so those are the kinds of things that, are, that I look at as the hard skills. Thinking ahead, right? And so as you further your career, and I certainly furthered my career, I, I found that at different stages, at different levels, thinking ahead meant different things. Right? Thinking ahead if I was um, an hourly employee at a hotel and knowing that Thursday I was on the schedule and I couldn't possibly be there and knowing how that would influence and impact the rest of the hotel, at that time that was thinking ahead for me to go to my general manager and say, look, if I'm not here at the 3 to 11 shift, you've got me scheduled, that's going to put a hole in Susie, the other person who's on staff, or Bill, who's the night auditor who's planning and coming in, that's really going to mess things up. At, at the level I'm at now, that's a very different thing. That's writing a three to five year strategy around what do we think the distribution landscape will um, look like. But today, no matter what you're doing today or whatever job you choose, thinking ahead, not just what we're trying to do today, but what, what does the future look like, whether that's 10 days from now, a year to now, a year from now, depending on where you are in your career. Those are important, those sort of hard skills that I talked about. And driving results, <clears throat> right? So, so I, I agree it's about, I'm a sales and marketing person, so I am about the top line. But it is, you know, it all starts in the top line. We say at IHG a lot, no, nobody does anything until somebody sells something, right? So if there aren't customers shopping and buying, driving those results, um, to bring it in, then, then the folks in accounting and the folks in operations can't bring it down to the bottom line to make sure that we're getting profitable revenue for our owners. And then there's the soft skills, right? So leading and, leading and developing, whether you're managing other people, right? That could, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just about managing other people. It's about you, leading yourself. What do you want to be? How do you want to act? What is your personal brand? How, how, does, how do your actions impact how people view you? These are important life lessons for us to learn at any stage of our game. Um, championing change is another reason why I think I was very lucky to have the career path that I had. I was always flexible. Right? The world is just not black and white. And fortunately or unfortunately, fortunately for somebody like me, the world's not black and white because I do well with change. Right? I can rally around change. I can adapt to change. That's an important thing um, that, that you'll need as you, as, that you need today, certainly, and you'll need as you move into your career because um, that's what your boss is looking for. If your boss wants to change a direction, if your boss is thinking ahead about something different that they want done, they want people who can rally around it, ask questions, challenge things. doesn't mean you just lay down and say, oh, fine, I'll just do it. Um, but, but it's about asking those right questions and challenging is there a better way to do things? And then teamwork, certainly, right? It's about how the collaboration. We live in a world where collaboration is so vitally important. And certainly here um, in this country, people like, you know, we, we like to have meetings, right, in the business environment. We all like to get together and talk about something, probably in the business environment a little, a little more than we probably need to. Um, but it is about that teamwork, and it is about you know, having diverse people in a room giving different points of views to come out with a better outcome. Um, so those are kind of, as I, I look at them, the, the hard skills and the soft skills a little bit.
Okay, so that's a little bit about how I got to where I am to stand in front of you today and what I think is, is, is so important, even if you may not realize right now, whatever you do tonight, whatever you did today in class, what you do tomorrow, really is setting that foundation for you as a leader in whatever career path you take. I'm going to spend a couple minutes now just talking to you about the current state of the business um, in the hotel business and, and where we see the business going. As I, as I told some of uh, um, these folks a little bit earlier, it's a, it's a great time to be in the hospitality business uh, because demand is strong. Right? Business is strong. People are traveling. Despite some of the economic turbulence, people are traveling. People want to travel. We are creatures. We, we are social creatures. Business is back. Right? Not to the degree that everybody wants it, but it's back. And people need to get out and do business. And also, people want a sense of occasion. They want to travel. Right? Maybe that family is not taking three vacations like they used to before. But I'll tell you what, when they take one vacation, they sure do want it right. right? So global RevPAR, and there's a lot on this slide. I don't know if you can see it the glare there, but, but, but what this is representing is that the global rev par is a, is a term we use in the, in the hotel business about revenue per, vi, per available room, and it's really a metric that tells